So far on this channel, we've covered getting your Steam games and your emulators up and running on alternative operating systems that aren't Windows or Mac OS. But what about those games that you have in other launches, such as EA Play, Ubisoft Connect, or GOG? Do all the games you own there have to be left behind just for the sake of privacy and security? Do you have to go back in time to when you started PC gaming just to stop yourself from buying games on anything that isn't Steam? And what about all those freebies that justify the existence of the Epic Game Store? Well, luckily you don't have to jump through that many hoops to get your games that aren't on Steam onto alternative operating systems. To start with, let's do some quick revision on how games work on operating systems that aren't Windows. When you install Steam on any of these operating systems and you hit play on a game, Steam uses a translation layer called Proton, which is designed to take the Windows instructions that your game is giving and translate them over to something else that your operating system can understand. But what if we could take that middleman? What if we could take Proton and use that somewhere else that isn't Steam? Well, that's exactly what you're going to see happening today. Thanks to talented individuals and passionate communities, you have the tools at your fingertips to get your games up and running, and you don't even have to use a terminal. So if you've seen any of these videos on this channel before, and you followed them through, and now you're using an alternative operating system that isn't Windows, you can add what you learn in this video on top of that. But if you haven't followed along with any of these videos, then this is more of a proof of concept to show you what can be done to hopefully give you some freedom away from operating systems which would rather spy on you than give you a good product. So let's get started. The magic program we need today to make this all happen is Lutris. Let's start in Manjaro. Here we have the add remove software program, which is automatically attached to the not a task bar. So we'll just click on that. Now to search for Lutris. And here you'll see two versions appear. That's because in the previous video where we discussed emulators, we needed to enable flat packs in order to get all of our emulators here. So if you're only seeing one version, you could just install that. That's the version that comes default with Manjaro. However, when I tried to install that version, I did have a problem. As you can see here, I'm hung up on checking inner conflicts. And apparently, based on some quick Googling, the fix requires terminal. And remember, we're doing the no terminal challenge here. So I'm very grateful that I've enabled Flatpaks and I can just go over to install the Flatpak version. If you didn't see the emulation video, all you need to do to get Flatpaks in Manjaro is go to the hamburger menu, then to preferences, then to third party, and then click enable Flatpaks. So I'm going to install the Flatpak version. The difference is that Flatpaks will download everything they need. So if you had two programs and they wanted the same dependency, if they're not Flatpaks or isolated software, then that means that they can share that dependency. A Flatpak will bring its own dependencies, its own luggage, and you shouldn't need to worry about it because the best version of that dependency should be packaged with the Flatpak. On top of that, Flatpaks, as you can probably guess by this design concept, are designed to be isolated from as many things on your computer as possible. They're meant to be containerized. So that means that if you are a little bit paranoid about some apps spying on you, then Flatpaks is probably the way to go. So now that that's installed, we're going to leave that here and show how to install on the other operating systems. So if you're using Manjaro and you want to get straight over to using Lutris, either sit tight or you can jump ahead in the video to the part where we get into Lutris. But for Mint users, we just need to go down to the not a start menu, hover over all applications and find the software manager. Once that's open, search for Lutris and it should appear right there. But before we click install, notice that underneath the install button, we have the option to install not only the flat pack, but the system package version. So let's take this opportunity to go to the Lutris website and find out which version is official because we like official versions when we can help it. If we check the Lutris website, 
we can see they have a lot of official versions, including the Manjaro version we had before. And if you scroll down this list, you might see a few versions that we'll come back to later. Mint's logo is on this page, which means that the system package version, or probably the .deb file, is official and we could use that. But considering we used Flatpaks on Manjaro, we'll install the Flatpak version, which is also official here. And just a quick reminder, when you are using free and open source software, make sure that you are using the official version if you intend to file bug reports on GitHub and help the developers in that way. Because filing bug reports for non-official versions, say filing a bug report for the Flatpak version of RPCS3, the developers can't help you because they don't officially maintain that version. But back to Mint, I'll click install and the Flatpak will be here in a moment. We won't be getting very far with Ubuntu. If you've seen any of the other videos on this channel, you know that Ubuntu has a few quirks which stop it from being very beginner friendly. Specifically for Lutris, there aren't any specific quirks here. Besides the fact that obviously the App Center wants us to only use snaps, even if they're not official snaps and come with more problems than other versions, say for example, this version of Steam here, which has a tick mark next to it, which would make a beginner think that it's official and they would end up running into a lot of problems and probably end up going back to Windows when they could have just had the official version here. But if we search for Lutris and then search for not snap packages, but Debian packages, we can see Lutris here. So if you insist on using Ubuntu and not using the terminal, good luck, but this is here for you. And funnily enough, we can search for Steam here as well. And Steam does appear as a Debian package. But again, a beginner is not going to be able to find this easily and they're going to end up with the quote unquote wrong version and not have a good experience. Now in the completely opposite vein of Ubuntu is Bazite. Bazite, just like Steam, has Lutris pre-installed, so we don't need to use their excellent software center called the Bazaar to download Lutris. Lutris is already here in the dock next to Steam, ready to go. And now finally, let's look at Fedora. Here we are in Fedora with the KDE desktop. And in the Not A Task bar, we have the Discover app. If you scroll through the official versions of Lutris on their website, you'll notice that Fedora's name also appeared there. And if we click this drop down menu here, we can also see that Fedora's Discover app also supports installing different versions. This is probably the most effective way to allow people to easily install different versions of an app because sometimes you don't want the flat pack. So in the case of Steam, you probably want a .deb as that's the official version, but some people might prefer the Flatpak version for the extra security. And if you're using Manjaro, Mint or Bazite, feel free to come back now because now we're gonna get into Lutris and it should all look the same no matter which operating system of these four you're using. So let's get into it. Click on Lutris to open it. Now look to the left hand side. You should see multiple launches here. Let's click on EA Play, the focus of today's video. Clicking on the actual EA app text doesn't do anything, but if we click on the little icon next to it, that will begin the installation process. Click OK on the first window that appears, then install on the next. If you're happy with the default installation directory, you can click continue, otherwise click the folder icon and pick another location. Then click install again, and now the process will begin. While that's underway, you might remember that we've mentioned WINE before. WINE stands for WINE is not an emulator and is the foundation on which Proton is built. From my understanding, WINE is targeted more at getting programs to work where Proton is laser focused on getting games to work as Proton is essentially Valve spin on WINE. And don't worry about all the terminal like texts here appearing on screen. You don't have to interact with any of this, so we're all good for the no terminal challenge. In fact, the next window you'll have to interact with is part of the EA app. And all you need to do is click let's go to finish the installation. You could launch EA Play from this installation finished window, but let's see how you'll do it once this window is gone on a fresh boot of Lutris. Over in the top left is where we'll find various collections of games and software. EA Play is currently under Games. 
it might move later as I experienced when I was testing this, but it should be under one of these menus. So once you find it, you can click on it. And you could double click and get into it directly, but let's do this a little bit differently and you'll see why at the end of the video. You can launch anything in Lutris once it's selected from the play button down the bottom. The reason why this is important is if you have trouble with anything in Lutris, that play button is also the stop button. So keep that in mind. Now you can use the EA app as you would on Windows. Click install on one of your games and you should be able to play it. This is clearly not the preferred way to purchase games in this house, so there's not much to pick from here. But let's go and install The Sims 4. You can tell EA Play is working as intended because we're getting ads. Yay. As always, it's highly recommended that you check ProtonDB to see what the compatibility of your game is, both as rated by Steam and the community. The usual caveats apply here. If your desired game was forbidden by the developers from running on privacy respecting operating systems under the guise of stopping cheaters, then switching from Steam to the EA app isn't going to help. How many cheaters did Battlefield 6 have in its beta? But Battlefield 6 only works on Windows. Also, don't forget to close the EA app on Lutris before booting up any EA game on Steam. This is because when you boot up a Steam game that insists that EA Play is mandatory, it launches its own version of EA Play, and the two will clash. Closing the EA app either requires a right click in your taskbar as on Windows, or hitting stop in Lutris, which is why I showed you where that stop button was before. So that's the EA app working on alternative operating systems. In a future video, we'll look at getting Ubisoft Connect up and running. The process will likely be similar, except we'll explore doing it on some different distributions and we'll cover any bugs or issues we might encounter along the way. So if you wanna give it a try yourself and see how far you get using Lutris, feel free to, but if you get stuck, stay tuned because we will cover that in a future video. And if any of these operating systems looked good to you, I have entire videos dedicated to them so you can get started with them. Then you could potentially watch this video on emulators to make sure that you can play all of your favorite retro games. And then you can play with your alternate launches using this video right here. So all going well, that should be most of your game library working on an operating system that isn't Windows.